In FlyQ EFB, we focus a lot of attention on minimizing the number of taps you have to make to the screen so that, from a pilot safety point of view, you can focus on flying the aircraft, not on playing with the iPad. We, in fact, we have a name for this. We call it the rule of two, which basically means it should never take more than two taps, preferably one, to get to key information that you need while you're flying. Let's take a look at how different applications handle showing the same information from the same airport, and you can see quite a bit of difference between them. For flight. In ForeFlight, if I'm looking at the map and I want to know more information about the airport here, this is my home airport, it's called Payne Field. I tap on the airport and I see a list of things nearby. I then hit the More button, I then hit the Details button, and I have detailed information right here. If I want to know more, I hit again the Details button and I see even more information about the airport. I have a small diagram of the airport on the left side of the top. I see that my taxiways, comments nearby, and FBO buttons, basic information is on the top. There's then a tab bar, a tab button along the middle of the screen, frequencies, weather, runways, and so on. And then if I pick a particular frequency, it says, okay, what kind of frequency? Do you want a common? Do you want a departure? Do you want ground? It's a lot of taps to get to it. Let's take a look at weather. Weather, it immediately shows me METAR information. If I want to know taps, I hit the tap button. If I want to know winds aloft, I hit the winds aloft button. Three taps to see that. Runways. When I select runways, again, I have to select a particular runway. Is it 11.29? Is it 1.6 left? Or is it 1.6 right? And so on. Okay. That's the way that ForeFlight shows airport information for this airport. Let's see how WingX Pro 7 shows information for my home airport, Painfield. Click on it. I move the map to the location. I tap on the navigate. Oop, I didn't mean the navigate. I missed. Um, I want the airport, so I tap off. Tap very carefully on the part that says KPAE. I then select KPAE from this list. It asks me again what information I want to see. I'll say AFD, and then the information is on the left side of the screen. I can scroll up. Now notice also to see different types of information. There's a scroll bar. Essentially, there's a tab bar, but it scrolls left and right because it doesn't fit. I'll select COM frequencies, and my COM frequencies are all there. My runways are listed there. I can pick location, scroll this over a little bit, maybe take a look at FBOs, and so on. Oddly, there's no way to get to weather from this part, um, so I can't show you that. So a little bit unlike uh, some other applications. So this is how you show airport information in WingX. It takes quite a few taps on the screen to get to the info. Now let's show airport information in the same airport, Payne Field, in FlyQ EFB. All right, so what I'm going to do now is to double tap over the airport in question. I immediately see most of the relevant airport information I need to fly to it. I see what the runway looks like, a diagram. I see that it's a blue icon, meaning it's controlled tower. Below the icon is a green symbol saying VFR, telling me that the weather conditions are currently VFR. I know my distance from it. I know the maximum runway is about 9,000 feet. The TPA is about 1700. I know the fuel price is 576 and tower and ADIS frequencies. For many uses, that's all I need. And I can immediately hit the direct to button or the button below it marked plus FP, which means add to flight plan. So I can immediately change my flight plan. If I want to see more information, I simply tap on the airport itself like that. And now look what I see. We do have a series of tabs along the top. They're big and easy to hit, and there's a lot fewer of them. But the most important part here is that instead of breaking the information down by category, like runways and things like that, com frequencies, instead, on this first page called General, we show you most of the information you're going to need to fly to the airport. So you can immediately see the elevation and the pattern altitude. You immediately see a satellite image with an arrow of 17 pointing to the north, telling me that there's a surface wind of 17 knots right now. You see the FA diagram. If I simply take my finger and move it up and down, I can see the COM frequencies on the left-hand side. I see the runways on the right side, including the crosswind. I see my nav aids in the area. All of this is simply by flicking your finger on the screen. No little buttons, no little taps to hit. Similar to weather. So now what we see is the, the current temperature is 54 degrees. I immediately see my local, my regional, and my national radar. Again, I simply move my finger up and down, and I see the METARs, and I see the TAFs, I see winds aloft, 
and so on. By the way, if the METARs are too small or the TAFs are too small, simply tap on it like that. And now it's super easy to see. Okay? If I want to see a seven day forecast, one tap. And here's what the weather will look like. It is Seattle after all, for the next seven days. So that is a way that we handle airport information to fly QEFB. And the point of it is that it takes far, far fewer clicks to see much easier to read information than it does in the other major applications. That's why we call it the rule of two, less than two taps to get to any piece of information that you need while you're flying.